Well, this should be Slasher Sunday. Maybe it will be. I don't know. Maybe I'll wait. Probably won't. Uh, so late Slasher Sunday, I suppose, for See No Evil 2, um, the Soska Sisters sequel to the original, obviously. Um, now, as I had said in my previous review, it was my brother's wedding this week and my birthday today. So I've had a lot of shit to do this week. That's why I haven't reviewed anything, although that has not stopped me from watching a ton of stuff. I've watched a lot in the last uh, week that I haven't talked about, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what I get to, what I review, what I don't. All right. So See No Evil 2 uh, has the Soska sisters in the directing chair this time. As I had said, it stars Daniel Harris uh, Catherine Isabel uh, and even Michael Eklund is in this for a little bit. Uh, can we just talk about how fucking unbelievably hot Catherine Isabel is in this goddamn movie? Holy shit, my god. This outfit that she wears and like the way she bends over the uh, corpse when she straddles him and and the and the, you know the cleavage when she pops her top and all of that shit. It's outrageous, man. It's fucking outrageous that alone makes the movie worth a watch that said my memory of this movie was not very good and when i say not very good i mean that i didn't care for the movie all that much i didn't really think the first one was all that great and when the soska sisters were directing this one i was like okay i have a little interest in this it's got daniel harris it's got freaking Catherine isabel it's got michael eklund it's got interesting things going on for a sequel you know and this probably i mean this was a little bit before that 2014 was it this might have been around the time when these movies that i didn't really care for the originals were getting these unreal directors attached to them for the sequels which of course is like annabelle creation and ouija origin of evil with mike flanagan and David Sandberg. So when the Soska sisters were attached to this, I was like, oh my God, I, I, I want to say this was around that same time frame where it was like, what? Like they were throwing these crazy directors at sequels. Um, there's a sequel that I'm trying to think of right now that was announced. Oh, it was like David Fincher uh, that was supposed to do World War Z 2. Like something like that. Another thing. And that didn't happen, of course, but like it was just like what the hell is going on why are they throwing these like incredible directors onto films sequels to films that weren't really all that well received now i actually liked world war z but i know most people didn't and so to throw something you know somebody like that onto that project was just wild to me uh it ended up not happening as we know but um regardless uh but anyway so on rewatch, after having just watched the original last week and, and following it up with this, did my opinion change on it? No, not really. Uh, I still think it's a pretty subpar slasher movie. Um, why? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, the chicks are hot. Sure. You got the, uh, you got the aforementioned ladies already who are, are gorgeous. And then uh, the, the other girl, the Kayla is uh, from Friday the thir or Friday the 13th, I'm sorry. Final Destination 3, one of the girls that gets stuck in the tanning bed. And in that movie, she shows her tits. In this movie, she doesn't. No titties in this movie, which is really annoying. Um, it w could have used it, for sure. I did really like the Soska sisters um, laying, like laying on that, uh, you know, the, the table the, uh, in the morgue. And their dead bodies uh, being part of the morgue and then saying the Soska sisters between them directing credits. That was awesome. That was a fantastic touch. I loved that. That was that was beautiful. Um, so really cool moment there. Um, and another really weird thing here is that um, the <laughs> I keep having this happen to me where there's these really strong coincidences. Uh, one of being that when I watched this yesterday, uh, it was like midnight, and that was my birthday. I started my birthday. Uh, currently, my birthday actually just ended 15 minutes ago as I'm looking up at the um, 
microwave. Uh, yeah, so it's 12.15 now, so I guess technically it's not my birthday. Hey, happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, but when I started this movie, it was my birthday. And the main character's name is Amy, and it's her birthday. And that day, on the 15th, my birthday is on the 16th, but it was past midnight. But that day when I got up, my kids and I went to a birthday party for a friend of mine, uh, kid, and that friend of mine's named Amy. So it was just like, Amy, birthday, this is weird, man. This is so fucking weird. It just keeps happening, like, in every freaking movie I watch. Ever since I watched the number 23, now I'm starting to see all these weird connections. Maybe maybe that ends up, what's A plus M plus Y? Or actually, the Amy that I know is A-I-M-E-E. -E. So I'm sure that uh, comes to 23 somehow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't know if he's nicknamed the God's Hand Killer in the first one. I think he might be, but regardless, that's what he's named out in here. Uh, we got a fake out friend scare in this. Unacceptable. Soska sisters, if they're going to claim that they're, you know, true horror directors, that they're going to have a name in this, in this uh, genre, you can't be doing lame ass rookie shit like that it's just not it's unacceptable to me like any good horror director is not gonna have that in their films it just it, plain and simple you're just not gonna find the fake out jump scare with the friend and the loud music to try to give a fake startle to the audience no that that is trash another thing this movie has and lacking is the kills. The kills are almost all lame. I can't think of anything. Maybe there's something that I'm missing here. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll look through it, but for now, oh, no, cats kill, the, the throat slit on Catherine Isabel. Yeah, Catherine Isabel gets the throat hit here, and then her neck falls as a side, and it opens up, and blood comes out, and she falls over. That looks good. That's a great throat slit. Um, but I want to say that's the only good kill in the entire film. Unacceptable. In a slasher movie like this that relies on its atmosphere and its kills and its babes, give us the tits. You have an actress in this that wants to show them anyways. I don't know if she wants to show them, but she has in the past. Um, Daniel Harris has even shown them in the past. But, hey, you don't have to. If you're getting people like that, I guess you don't have to. And plus she said that in her interview with uh, Halloween that she only did that because it was tasteful for the moment and because she was sold on it to be important and whatever like something I, it doesn't matter and that's her right this and that but you can bring in some tits to the movie and of course and you don't have to do I mean Catherine Isabel is hot enough in this movie without seeing her naked that I'd actually be fine that's not even really a huge issue to me in this movie um, it would have helped, of course, but it's not a huge issue. The huge issue here is I don't really care for any of the characters. I don't really like any of them. I mean, Catherine Isabel's hot for sure. The relationship between Daniel Harris and her little boyfriend in the morgue thing, not all that interesting to me. The There's no exploration of any characters here where I feel like there could have been. The whole, like brother protecting the sister, but their relationship's kind of odd. Where is that explored, really? The more attendant boss guy being in a wheelchair and him helping out the guy trying to ask Daniel Harris out and all that. Like, where did that all go? What was going on with that? Did that really amount to much? No. And when it comes down to it, yes, they have their little moment, but is it really all that heartfelt? Do we really all that much care that he's got her or he's getting her or whatever? It doesn't really play in the movie. They don't really play up their relationship. We don't really understand why he, you know, outside of her being Daniel Harris, being pretty girl, whatever. Yeah, they might have, we don't know it though. They don't really show their connection. We don't really see them grow. We don't really get to see that moment where they have that like bonding or she's like gives in and is like, I've always liked you. And you're like, yes. Like I was hoping they were going to get to that. You just don't care. They're such throwaway characters and, I don't know, lame. Um, so yeah, if, if if you would have had Catherine Isabel having her hot ass scenes like this, 
and you would have maybe built up the characters just a little more, just a little, maybe just take out the brother thing and then ramp up the relationship thing, something. And then you gave us some great kills, then I'd be reporting to you and having a fun time talking about this rad sequel being like, yeah, so much better than the original. I mean, there's better stars in it, so I liked watching this one more, for sure. But it's not much better. <laughs> I mean, I didn't, I'm didn't. i not recommending it, so I don't know. Um, I like how the brother is... You know, the, Kayla's trying to come on at the brother in the hallway. And he's like, come on, Kayla, you're like a sister to me. And then it like goes straight into them going after each other and, and uh, you know, going hard on each other. And I was like, man, this is like a lot of the Pornhub videos I watch. The step siblings, um, which seems to be the thing these days. But that's where all the hot chicks are in the porn these days. So, so you know, judge me all you want. Um... I do like that Kayla was just about to try to fuck that girl or that guy and then when they run into Catherine Isabel they give her shit for having sex in the morgue and it's like you were just trying to fuck in the morgue like do you not remember what you were just doing <laughs> uh, that that was really stupid uh, the mask he puts on here hmm I like Kane's performance in this better because they do give him more speaking role here, uh, which I actually liked. I liked that he spoke. Um, I like when my killers speak. I'm fine with it. That's why I'm like in the very, very, very small minority that loves that Michael Myers talks. Um, not only in uh, the original Rob Zombie's Halloween as a kid, but also when he yells die um, at the end of H2. I know, as I said, I'm, I know so many people disagree with me on that, but they're too traditional. They're just too traditional. They're too stuck in the franchise. That's not, I've said it a million times, that's not John Carpenter's Halloween. Um, this is Rob Zombie's Halloween and Michael Myers talks. It makes sense that he talks, but whatever. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll remain alone on that idea. But I do like that Kane talks more here and I like his performance. I think he gives the best performance in the movie. <laughs> Which a character like this usually doesn't get that if he's just kind of the strong brute and has very little lines. But I don't know. The way he says stuff, he goes and he grabs his mom. That could have been explored more, but it's like two seconds with his mom and that's about that. Um, but he's just like, I see now. And he's like going after these guys. He's very intimidating. He's got a great presence. And he's got this... He's got a very conflicted sense to him that I can feel. And it's kind of like he's rejecting what his mom uh, indoctrinated with within him. But he's also like, it's he's too far gone. So it's like this juggling act like throughout the movie where he's like, I, I don't know what to do. I can't. Uh, and I do like that. So I like it. And he looks buffer in this. Like he looks much buffer. I don't know when the first one was made. This is 2014 as we had established... And I think the movie's too far away for me to grab it. Um, but years, good amount of years. I want to say it was like 2008, 2000, something like that. So it's been a little, I mean, it's six years, That is that accurate? Regardless, man, the dude looks buffer in this movie. I think he got a little more jacked for this film. And this is supposed to take place like the same night. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to take place the same night. And uh, that dude's dead. I mean, this dude's dead. We watch his heart punctured. And they don't even address that. They're just like, nah. And then he takes off and he has he still has the wound through his face. Where he's just... His brain would have been... He's supernatural in this. I mean, he has to be. He is dead. Um, Amy's death. Daniel Harris's character. Uh, is surprising. It is surprising. Although at that moment when she dies, you think, okay, the other guy's pretty much going to have to die then. Because uh, he just got her, and it was like, oh, man, she was like the main character. And then, boom, she just kind of gets killed out of nowhere. I mean, freaking knife comes through the door, and she just dies. And it's, wow, it's like, that's crazy. Um, then the dude gives him, like, a formaldehyde enema, 
And of course, he doesn't uh, die. And he goes up, and, and, and this is the first guy whose eyes he takes in this one. I thought they just completely forgot about the eye thing. Like, that was his whole gimmick in the first movie. He took everybody's eyes. Um, now, I'm sure the Soskas were like, I don't want to be freaking beholden to that. I don't want to have to, you know, do that for sure. I want to be able to do whatever the hell I want. That being said, it's like, then why didn't you do more fun stuff? Whatever. Um, and the haunting music and the looming carnage shots at the end are, as I said, haunting but at the same time kind of beautiful. So I really liked the way that those the music played with those with the editing and and uh, the shots in that. So I actually really thought I really liked that. So it was like a um a montage or a compilation of shots that almost kind of reminded me of the ending of like John Carpenter's Halloween where you just got those like stationary shots of hallways and living rooms and you hear Michael Myers is breathing. That's a very eerie ending, one of my favorites in horror history. Um, but this one's a little more, um, a little more beautiful. Like the way the music plays, and as I said, it's haunting as well. So I did like that. But overall, it's a better sequel, but not by much. Into a very lackluster film and a lackluster sequel for me. Some people really like it, and that's great, but uh, didn't work for me. Anyways, so there you go. Adios.